So finally, the day has come. Uh, I've been waiting to do this video. I've been waiting for things to come in place on the bike and I've been waiting for development to reach a certain level so that uh, I can show you some really neat stuff. So when it comes to mobile navigation, you have the two obvious setups. You, you either have uh, the Garmin, um, the little device you put on your bike. It's rugged and weatherproof and has most of the things that you want to do. But mainly it's, uh, it's a lot of turn-by-turn of -turn navigation biased on, on that one. Then you have the uh, mobile phone that you downloaded a neat little map app and you put it on your bike with all the problems that comes with that. Um, and you have to bring it in and it can overheat and everything. Yeah, so in the last video, the ultimate no mobile navigation, we started uh, looking at how to take mobile navigation to the next level, uh, overcoming certain challenges like charging when it's wet and, and, and touching uh, with your gloves and using the controller instead, things like that. But what I didn't realize that that's a whole new path to something that I believe will uh, really revolutionize uh, navigation and more on on motorcycles, on especially adventure motorcycles. So in this video, we're going to take it a step further. I'm going to show you uh, a walk around of what I believe to be the highest end mobile or device based uh, navigation system for any motorbike that exists today. So we're talking boss level. And in the end of this video, we're going to meet the boss. So just like in the previous video that I made, uh, this setup is made up by three parts. Um, we have the device, we have the software running on it, and we have the controller to remotely control the, the system. And the parts that I'm going to show you today are the top-notch parts of, of this setup. So let's start with the device. Okay, so first of all, we have the device itself, and this is the Carpe Iter pad. Um, and there are many devices on the market, but this one is especially made for adventure motorbiking. Uh, it's even firmware or, or the internals of are programmed to uh, modulate charging so that it doesn't overheat when it's too warm and everything like that. So, so uh, temperature, temperature wise, it's even um, in, the, in the core of it, it's made not to overheat. Uh, the shell and yeah, the di device itself is completely waterproof and dustproof and everything that uh, to a level that you would need on a bike. One of the major uh, benefits of this device is, in my opinion, the screen brightness. I can use it in full sunlight. Um, and I don't know exactly what it means, but it has a brightness of 1000 nits. And that could be 1000 bananas. But my Samsung device, I checked it, it had 550 bananas. So almost twice the bright brightness. Okay, so let's take this little fellow and show you a bit also. So the device itself is, as I mentioned, a bit custom made and you have this uh, plug here that you can connect uh, other charging uh, things and you have wheel sensors and stuff like that. Um, but the actual holder, let's take it out. So yeah, it's, it's lockable with this opening mechanism here. It has two charging pins, uh, connects directly to the battery. There's a small um, circuit on the po power supply that disconnects the power. Uh, it stops charging when the engine is not running. So it needs to be uh, over a certain voltage to, to charge. So it takes care of that. Um, yeah, I've made my special mount for this because I want it to be readable when I stand up and uh, things like that. And it's not easy to mount it directly on the small uh, 
uh, on the small bar here because it comes too close and this is too big so it needs to come out a little bit so let's mount that again like so there are mounts uh, built for this uh, holder so that you can mount it the way I do um, it basically it just uh, adds uh, it just connects to any amps uh, block that you can put pretty much anywhere um, or, or in a road book tower or whatever okay so let's take a look at the at the software the uh, drive mode dashboard too it's really it's not a navigation app that you use to replace your favorite navigation app like uh, Locus Maps or whatever you use. So think of it as an operating system for your bike. It's uh, where you put your favorite apps that you need while riding. If you need anything, it's, uh, it comes more and more features that really replace the need of other apps. But so let's take a walkthrough of, of uh, the drive mode dashboard. So this is the dashboard, dashboard page, the speed, you have some trip meters, your favorite apps. Um, I use uh, Google Drive to have all my GPX uh, stored so I can work from home also and add stuff there and then just bring it up here if, if I want to load it. I have a, a widget there for, um, for Compass. And also since this version lacks GPX recording, which is a coming feature, but right now I have put the Locus Maps widget here. So I don't have to start Locus Maps. Uh, I just um, press record from this screen and it starts recording uh, and saves it to Google Drive, which I then can bring up or yeah. So let's, let's move on. Let's go right. Here's the map and it's a really really nice map because it's it's focused on adventure and off-road riding it does not really highlight all the highways and things like that well, of course you see them there it's based on um, open uh, street maps I think um, but you have really highlighted the trails here the, um, even graded trails so you can see the difficulty level of those trails and the small roads, you can even see which ones are, uh, are normal asphalt. And if the data is there in OpenStreetMap, you can even see which ones are gravel. So that's a really neat feature. Um, on this map also, you have small widgets that you can put there. Uh, I have my current speed, heading and also engine temperature. How did I get that there? I'll show you in a minute. So really neat, uh, in, in this map module, you get all the offline maps for the world in this detail. So it's really, really complete like that. So yeah, I use that uh, most of the time now, actually. Moving on, we have just a list of all your apps on the device uh, we have the brightness and rotation settings and things like that uh, general settings for the system and here the roadbook reader which is really advanced and nice um, i prefer this one actually pdf based uh, roadbooks and yeah i i can really rely on this and it's uh, i like that um, this is a nice one and actually let's start the engine here and I'll show you. Yeah, it brings up all the engine values um, from the bike that it can get from the ODB uh, port on the bike. So I will show you uh, that in a minute. Yeah, but you have RPM, you have coolant temperature, intake temperature, intake pressure, engine load. 
you have voltage and throttle position, speed from uh, uh, the bike computer and everything. Yeah, so um, that's quite neat. It's not to be used really on this uh, screen, but you can use all these values on other screens to bring up as widgets. So that's where it comes in handy. Bring up the values that you want. Okay, so in here we have access to the little service port, the ODB port of, of uh, the bike. And here we have the little ODB link dongle here. So it's uh, fr from ODB link. I'll post a link to the ODB link also. And don't use cheap Chinese stuff for this if you want it to be always on the bike because this one has power um, management, so it shuts off and so on when, when the bike is off and stuff like that. So uh, I would just need to uh, waterproof it a bit to have it here. So that's all you need and a connector cable, uh, can, uh, which is specific for your bike uh, like that. Here you have the ordinary speedo uh, showing the speed if, if you, you're not really navigating but you see the true speed of the bike. So that's the drive mode dashboard. It's, um, it's what you make of it. Um, I don't want really a turn by turn to, to Starbucks thing but if I want I can bring up Google Maps and find the open place somewhere and, and go there. But normally I just use the, the map to explore here, just like a, a paper map. And I may have drawn some GPX files on it and follow that or not. So finally the controller. And you may remember that I had the, the smaller controller before. It's now circulated within the Nomad Sweden because I got this new controller. Um, I'm really satisfied with that one. It really was the game changer for uh, using your, your apps and everything from the handlebar. Um, that one had a small joystick and it worked really well and two buttons. But what I felt is that when you were on really bumpy roads standing up and, and you wanted to do something, uh, like pan the map or whatever to see what's what's ahead. It was a bit hard sometimes to get the correct direction on the little joystick. I, I accidentally moved it to uh, to the left instead of up and things like that. So um, then I noticed that they had these uh, up other more rally versions of the controller, which is called Terrain Command Generation Two and I have them on this bike and I'll show you. Okay, so I have mounted it. It's, it's uh, two pieces, two uh, of these controllers. So I have one here and because of the space here, uh, I, I, you can opt to do as I did and put the other one over here on, on, on that handlebar. So you can, yeah, you, you will use uh, two hands really but the optimal would be to have them both uh, next to each other. Um, I had to move this part uh, and, and uh, yeah, to squeeze this in here because I really want to access these easily. And what it makes different than the, the small controller is that while riding, you can easily feel the, the four different buttons here. And I can, it's, it's a distinct, almost industrial button feeling on on pressing these so so uh, it's it's a bit more control uh, controllable while going rough um, the small controller was battery operated so you mounted it here and it connected through bluetooth up to the device um, that's no problem because that battery in, in the small one was really oversized uh, I had it, I used it for half a year and I didn't have to charge it uh, up to 100% more than once. Um, so I think you could have it for a year without recharging. But the terrain command here is uh, powered 
by the bike. So you connect it to the electric system of the bike. So you don't have to ever uh, worry about charging. Uh, it's also very quick. It, it, it's lightning fast. When you click it, what you, wh what you do uh, happens immediately. Yeah, so how I use this is uh, I ride and I can switch between the screens with the two up here, uh, second from the bottom. I can go right and left. And if I go to the screen, the bottom ones is zoom in and zoom out. I can uh, get to the menu here. You can do everything on this device using uh, the buttons. And on this blue button, I can bring up the HUD and that's part of uh, the, uh, the controller actually uh, on the screen. So from here I can enable and disable touch for instance. And that's good if it's raining, so you don't want any accidental presses from raindrops. So um, now it's disabled, I go home, I can only use the controller now to to use the screen and I also like to have it in dusty conditions because sometimes I just want to take my hand and wipe it off and nothing nothing happens on the screen and I can also control media brightness uh, volume and things like that looking on the controller again you can see that it's uh, cabled and both the controllers uh, goes through cable and to this central unit I have Put it here and maybe I will place it somewhere else. Um, but these are the two controllers that come in uh, to this little box and this box is powered from the bike and it connects to the, the to the device through Bluetooth. But it's always there and really quick to to connect so you don't have to wait for anything. Yeah so that was a quick walkthrough of the boss level mobile or or adventure bike navigation uh, in my opinion so i really enjoy having this on the bike uh, i am a tech nerd so uh, yeah <laughs> there's something for everyone but i'm also uh, really enjoying the community and and see where this is heading because there's a lot of things uh, being developed and instead of using different apps for things and bringing up stuff it's all integrated to the same system in a really neat way and you can whatever pops up on that screen and on uh, drive mode dashboard is always made sure to be controllable from from the handlebars yeah so in the community on adv rider uh, there's a link in the description if if you want to go there and check it out. There's I noticed there's one man in the in the middle of everything here and and who's who's making all these things and I'm a bit confused how is this all uh, managed. So we have Carpe Iter, who are they? Then we have Thork Racing involved in the mix here also, and this man uh, called Joao or or John in the forum. So I thought it would be interesting to talk to that guy and see what's, uh, who is he and what has he got uh, up his sleeve and what's his plans for, for, for uh, this system in the future. But I can talk to him here so I have to connect you to, uh, to the studio again. Let's see if we can get connected. So Robert, are you there? Hello. Can we get the link? Hello. Ah, oh, hello, Robert. Hello. Yeah, hi. Um, yes, I need you to take over to for to make the interview uh, with uh, Joao. Can you can you manage that? Absolutely, no problem. I have it all set up here, so let's go. Very good. Okay, so over to you, Rob. Okay, thank you, Rob. So everything is ready. So let's just dive into the interview. Um, so yeah, first of all. I'm glad to see you uh, in person. Uh, we've been communicating with, in the community and so on, but, but I am still a bit confused about, um, we have the Carpe Iter, then we have Thor Racing, and then through the community, we have this John guy. Uh, so so <laughs> perhaps you can explain where, where this all comes from and, and your part in, in this. 
yeah this this all started a while ago i would say around four years or something and it, it actually started because we have a friend of ours who rides with us on the weekend and he he, um, he has a motorcycle brand the only portuguese brand it's called ajp oh yeah the um, touch bike yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah uh and uh some years ago um he was already selling the PR7 with uh, a front tablet and all that. Uh, but uh, the, the thing that I, I never really liked about a phone or a tablet on a, on a bike was that uh, I, I didn't find it practical, you know. Um, and I suggested that maybe the first step would be like at least uh make some type of launcher for a motorcycle okay so at this stage it was uh primarily the, uh, the software uh the sort of start of drive mode on on yeah. uh android device that you had it wasn't really paired with the, the 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 specific hardware yet then i guess no there was at at, at that time there was no controller there was no uh specific tablet uh, and we did the first ride with uh, with our own app, like a long ride, a multi-day ride. It was the TET Portugal. And yeah, the first thing that we noticed was that, yeah, okay, the app works, the launcher works. Uh, we got a bunch of new ideas, uh, but we immediately noticed that there was something that was missing. and. That was the uh, hardware buttons to control it, because it's 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 it was really frustrating that we started riding and then, for example, you want to adjust zoom, and uh, if you're on off road, on 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 the bumpy road, it's really hard to use your finger to hit a button on the screen, you know, and and. As, as the days went on, on that first ride, it, it got frustrating uh, uh, even more by day, you know. it's uh, We were always stopping because, okay, now I need to adjust zoom. Then you start and you notice that the follow location isn't on. Another stop. Uh, if your gloves are not uh, touch compatible, you have to remove gloves, touch. Oh, yeah, been there. Gloves, start. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, I got like at the end of the second or third day and, and I remember I told him, well, as soon as we get back, we need to make a controller. But then I'm not sure who, I think it was a guy on Facebook, someone called Jacob. And then he, he introduced me to, to Jan, uh, who is from the Czech Republic. And uh, he already had these controllers, and uh, I think he already had a tablet too. Yeah, it was on the first version. Uh, he called the, those products Carpe, which is still the name that we use. And yeah, we started talking, uh, and uh, he sent me a controller. I tried it. Um, we discussed what we wanted uh, in a controller, and uh, I quickly started to to um, make adjustments on his app. You wanted something on your bike to uh, to do what? I mean, you already had Garmin's and the apps out there. What, what, why did develop something new? You know, like I, I remember my, my friend, Caesar, he, he showed me like this um, latest model Garmin. Um, and uh, because I, I was actually considering buying something and I remember playing with it. And I'm sure it's very reliable and, and very tough and it works great. Um, yeah, but I remember my feeling was like, yeah, this, this looks cool if um, maybe 10 years ago, you can buy with 300 euros, you can buy a cell phone with 10 or more uh, cores. So even if it adds just half, it would still be faster than most of dedicated devices. Um, you can buy a, a phone with a dual GPS chip, 
with um, a big battery, uh, waterproof, um, and uh, it will work great. Usually, the only problem that you uh, that you can consider a problem is how to feed it uh, power-wise, because USB cables on off-road, well, it, they they tend to be the the soft spot, you know. The, um, if it's going to break, it's going to be there. Um, but everything else works quite well. That, at least hardware-wise, that's the reason. And software-wise, uh, it's fragmentation. If, if I have to use 10 different apps while I'm riding, switching from app to app, uh, and all of them will have totally different user interfaces. Uh, none of them will be compatible with controllers, at least for doing the main features. So software-wise, that was the reason, and, and it's still the reason why I keep adding new features on the same app. Yeah. Because if if it's on the same app and you can uh, switch it all with a controller, then you don't need to toggle from app to app and 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 uh, um, and having to learn how to use like 10 different apps what what is the current status of the app and what what do you see the sort of evolution of this uh, software will it continue going in the same pace uh, actually uh, I often think and uh, I get concerned about it sometimes that it's the fact that even if i work eight hours per day on drive mode uh i'll probably die without it being ready yeah i actually <laughs> think about that a lot because there's such a huge list of stuff that we want to do even on on the current sections you have a map that's still missing turn by turn navigation um there's points of interest search ability that's all, almost done. You have the OBD section. It's at 45% uh, progress. Um, and then there's this huge list of stuff, uh, especially when, uh, when, we ma when we finally tackle the user accounts and the online functionality there's a lot of work there you know like st basic stuff like you having your own account that will sync on all phones you can uh, um, uh, you can have like a friends list so that you can change uh, exchange files between all your friends um, set up like a, a writing party and then you can see everyone on that party on the map um, we have uh fall detection coming that using the, the 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 phone sensors if you fall it will trigger automated uh stuff that you need to pre-configure um yeah and 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 most of the stuff that that we have on our list is actually stuff that we have a, a big riding group here sometimes we do multi-day trips where we are six seven eight guys and it's easy to identify uh, what's needed because at the moment almost all of them are using a tablet with drive mode um, and uh, yeah this types of stuff is, is stuff that happens on on all trips on, on the beginning yeah. there's there's the thing with uh, the GPX file so someone is going to share it and send it or by email or drive someone is going to ask me oh okay how do i use drive to get the file so yeah. i will have to go bike by bike and check the tablets and help them out because you're so the I tech guy it, yeah yeah i guess so so a lot of stuff came exactly uh for those reasons little details that i i i uh, it started happening on our trips and uh um yeah i i I got the idea from them, from, from those situations, and uh, I want the solution so that 
no one asks me again how to get <laughs> this or how, how can we share the location and then some guys are used to using whatsapp some use google and but some no, don't use anything so they want to learn how to share location so yeah all those things location share viewing it on the map uh easy a, a easy way to share files between everyone on the group all those things i want not only to have them on drive or drive mode but make it easy because for example you you can do stuff and, and we're back at the technology if you have uh all of them will have bluetooth all of them so it's quite easy for an app to know if there are uh other users nearby using the same app like you can do a search and anyone near that's using drive mode will you can make them in 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 sync you know just by with one or two buttons and that's it there's a party it's formed now send files and it's and it's done uh, i can i didn't think of but i can identify myself with the sharing and yeah the ideas for for upcoming features there so yeah we as a customers and community we just need to make sure you to keep you alive and uh, coding <laughs> so that's our purpose yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and uh, i will keep working the same way uh, i really like community input and uh, a lot of the times uh, you get th there's a lot of value in them, you know. Like for you, maybe so you 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 write me a message like, yeah, it would be nice if the app would do this or that. Uh, and sometimes you have no idea how valuable your uh, your idea is. You know, we 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 have like key features. I think uh, it was you. Uh, yeah, I think it was you who, who, who told me the other day that there's no other app with OBD info on top of a map. Yeah. And it's such a simple thing, but there's none. Yeah, right? because they don't go there. They have the, their specific, uh, that they're a map app. They don't have other yeah. stuff in it. But since you have sort of an operating system for the bike, you, you can yeah. sort of, yeah, intertwine things. Yeah. So a lot of what you see on the app, they are not my original ideas. They come from the community. So yeah. they have great, great value. And, yeah. uh, and then you have this huge um, uh, amount of, of also testers, because if something is wrong, if something <laughs> is not You get working, to know about it quickly. <laughs> you can be sure. And, and I, li I like, I really like that type of, um, of connection with the users because yeah. I'm a rider and they are they are riders also so so it was amazing sure. to talk to you and if, I hope I get more chances in the future and so Anytime. glad that you uh, could part, uh, participate in this because I think there's a lot of interest so uh, yeah many thanks from me and thank hopefully you. all the other guys so thank you see you, bye see bye, you around then <laughs> okay bye 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 John bye bye. Ha, ha, ha.